phenomenal apex predators. It almost looks like a bull and it acts like a bull. Found in the world's oceans and coastal waters. That's a big bull shark right there. That's a big bull. We got one. Now, as human populations grow, oh. we may be encountering this powerful creature. I felt something grab the top of my head. There has been an increased amount of sightings and reports of sightings of bull sharks in rivers recently. And in the face of a threatened food chain... Oh, we got it a, is shark. a bull shark! It's a shark! They may increasingly encounter us, the bull shark. In a shared and shrinking habitat, where and how will people and bull sharks collide? It's the ultimate expedition challenge as science investigates a super predator, hooked river sharks. Forget the notorious Great White. Today, a different shark is making headlines. An amazingly adaptive animal that can reach a quarter ton, the bull shark. Normally found around the world in coastal ocean waters and surrounding rivers, now there may be a new bull shark front line. Sightings are on the rise, and they're coming from far inland. There has been an increased amount of sightings and reports of sightings of bull sharks in rivers recently. Is this really because there's more bull sharks in rivers, or is it because humans are becoming more and more aware of this? Scientists are hoping to find the answer. Bull sharks have a history of encountering people upriver. The blockbuster movie Jaws was based on a series of historic New Jersey human shark collisions. In the attacks, the bull shark was an alleged perpetrator. The Jersey attacks in 1916 actually consisted of five different attacks. There was two that were coastal out at sea, and those well could have been a great white shark. The three of the attacks occurred up a little stream, up a river. From now, what we understand about how sharks utilize different habitats, it's pretty clear that those three attacks were from a bull shark. Such attacks are misleading. These remarkable predators never intentionally attack people. Yet, a curious or startled bull shark can deliver an accidentally fatal bite. It's very easy to get on the wrong side of the bull shark. It doesn't mean that it's out there to hunt you or that it's trying to feed off humans, but it can bite and it can attack for defensive purposes or just because you got too close to it. And now, these alpha hunters are fighting for their own survival as their coastal ecosystems face devastation and global human development expands. Homo sapien and bull shark must share a crowded habitat. Urgent questions loom. Can man and beast coexist? How can we protect these threatened hunters while also protecting ourselves? And what are the new front lines between us and these incredible river sharks. <laughs> 2009, Brisbane River, Queensland, Australia. This may be one of the most active bull shark freshwater gateways, a place where sharks are entering the inland river system through a bustling metropolis of two million people. Surrounded by dense human development, Increased sightings suggest the Brisbane may be a prime laboratory to understand growing human bull shark encounters. But are bull sharks coming closer to us, or are we coming closer to them? One man is determined to find out. South African scientist and adventurer Ryan Johnson has traveled thousands of miles to trace this fish far up river and to take DNA samples and analyze freshwater bull shark behavior. I'm here to study bull sharks to understand how and why they're utilizing these river systems. To help him navigate the river system, Ryan's joining forces with an experienced local captain. Also on board the expedition hey, is Paul. one of Australia's most celebrated fishermen, Paul Worstling. 
Fantastic to meet you, mate. You too, man. How you doing? Great. Now, you've travelled over 15,000 kilometres. Let yeah. me see if I can help find you a bull shark. Let's Hope go. so, man. Ryan spent his life studying apex predator sharks. Yet this mission may be one of the most important of his career. Australia's media accounts of freshwater bull shark sightings show an increasing trend. But no one has yet documented precisely how far up they may or may not be migrating, where they're settling, breeding, or feeding. Through genetic research, Ryan hopes to uncover how bull sharks are using rivers and why humans are encountering them. Human invasion into bull shark territory may only be part of the story. Where is the Brisbane River bull shark population coming from? Are they migrating from elsewhere? Or is a local shark family multiplying? Freshwater DNA samples can offer insights. Genetic research on bull sharks is great. It can tell us whether these individual sharks we're seeing here are using this very river system for their entire lives. Aside from a few isolated accounts, river bull shark sightings typically occur just a few miles inland in what's known as brackish water, a mixture of salt water and fresh. Pregnant bulls go there to give birth, and juveniles often swim a few more miles inland as they mature. But are there new bull shark behaviors? Studying bull sharks exclusively in freshwater may be the next scientific frontier. Using a salinity tester, Ryan checks the water for a level of less than 0.5 parts salt per thousand. For this mission, Ryan's goal is to explore bull sharks found only in pure freshwater. And bingo. Check through there, you can see it's 100% fresh water. That is incredible. Well, looks like we're in the right spot to go catch some bull sharks. Good stuff. Let's do it, mate. Ryan hopes to capture vital measurements, observe behavior, and take DNA samples of any freshwater bulls he catches. Data that could offer insight into bull shark genealogy, adaptation, and physiology, all helping to shed light on the only common shark that can thrive in two distinctly different habitats. On the water system, there's an incredible difference between fresh water and salt water. The stresses that it puts on fish is, is major, and only a few species can readily adapt to be able to utilize both. And out of 400 odd species of sharks, the bull shark is the only shark that's taken that evolutionary route to be able to survive in fresh water and also in salt water. So that makes it very, very special. Though marine biologists can only theorize how prehistoric bull sharks developed this ability, today it's an advantage that makes these beasts some of the most adaptable sharks on the planet. The bull shark has very specialized organs. One of them is a rectal gland, which allows it to either retain salts or excrete salts. And this is really the key reason why bull sharks can live in both fresh and salt water. For Ryan Johnson, such unique abilities make his bull shark expedition vitally important. In an increasingly imperiled ecosystem, we must study these adaptive predators wherever we can find them. December 3rd, 2009, 8 a.m., 49 miles from the ocean. It's day one of Ryan Johnson's three-day expedition. Ryan sets out from a spot 49 miles upriver from Brisbane City, targeting the terrain of some of the most recent bull shark sightings. The men head upriver, moving further from the river mouth, heading deeper upstream. Even with decades of combined experience, Ryan and Paul know they're in for a challenge. What are you doing? Nice and quiet. Don't want to scare the sharks. Nice cast, mate. Though some shark catchers use nets, they can dangerously immobilize trapped sharks, causing injury or even death. For the expedition, 
Ryan Fields yep. Rod and Reel is a more controlled method for luring and safely capturing any research subject. Reminds me a bit of Amity Island. Jaws. Hours later, still no bite. Got this little green boy there that's just sitting there. And it hasn't moved. Patience, my friend. Patience. What are you supposed to do when you just sit here waiting? Oh, oh. Okay, slowly walk. Hook it over. Suddenly, a strike. Good man, got him. Slowly wind, slowly wind, slow, just slow, slow, till you feel weight. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Okay, now hook. Ryan has no idea what he's hooked. He hopes it's the bull shark he's hunting. Just, just wind, 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 wind. Yes, yes, you've got him. Oh, that's a, that's a big fish, mate. Damn it. Oh, can you feel him? Point the rod, chip, that's it, that's it, good man. Bull Shark Expedition team leader Ryan Johnson battles what feels like a whopper bull in fresh water. This is gonna take a long time, man. You just gotta land this fish, mate. This is the fish, this is the fish we've been looking for. In a split second, Ryan gets a startling peek at the animal below. Then the line goes slack. You come all the way over here and you've got this aim in your mind and when it doesn't come together you get very disappointed at the moment. I do blame myself and I'm feeling pretty gutted. Though he couldn't determine the exact size, judging from the animal's strength, Ryan's almost certain it was a large bull shark. The researcher hopes his expedition's on the right track. Following an alpha shark deeper into its freshwater lair, uncovering the furthest frontiers of bull shark human encounters. And around the world, as media reports of bull shark human encounters increase, understanding these amazing predators is more critical than ever. Bull sharks are ingeniously designed super carnivores. Named for their short, blunt snouts and fierce tempers, they can stretch nearly 11 and a half feet, weighing more than 500 pounds. Though roughly two thirds the size of the great white, the bull has several astounding advantages. One of them, sky high testosterone. Imagine natural born killers on steroids, literally. Bull sharks have this reputation of being a very aggressive shark. And this really stems from the fact that out of pretty much all mammals and all fish, bull sharks have the highest testosterone level recorded. No fish in the sea packs more testosterone per square inch. The steroidal hormone behaves in sharks much the way it does in humans, building muscle, stimulating adrenal systems, fueling aggression. And bulls have another natural weapon. These super predators sport rows of inch-long serrated teeth. Their favorite prey, large fish, rays, and other sharks. Bulls can go in for the kill with a deadly ambush in seconds. Though these powerful hunters do not target humans, any accidental encounter can be dangerous. Lake Miami, Australia, the evening of December 16, 2002. Just 68 miles from Ryan Johnson's freshwater expedition launch site, 23-year-old swimmer Bo Martin sets out to race his friend across a stretch of man-made canal systems. But Bo never makes it back to shore. He's dragged under by an unseen attacker. A thorough autopsy and coroner's report conclude Bo's death is the result of a fatal collision with a shark. And based on the location's proximity to known bull shark territory, it's almost certainly a bull shark. Less than two months later, February 8, 2003, Burley Waters, just a few miles from Lake Miami, registered nurse Mary Gulliver kayaks in the same canal system where Bo Martin died. She spots a badly mangled body floating in the water. The 84-year-old victim is later identified as a local resident. His leg wounds are consistent with the bite pattern of a bull shark. A beast capable of such wounds likely measures over six and a half feet long. 
Alarmed, residents are cautioned to stay out of local waters, particularly at night and in the early mornings when hungry bull sharks are most active. But there's a problem. Like the Brisbane River, the area's canal system is connected to the open ocean. It includes numerous lakes and well over 200 miles of waterways. It's too big to police. In addition, no one knows if the two incidents are related to the same shark. Only one thing is certain. In both cases, the encounters occurred at least 14 miles from the ocean in cloudy canals and rivers. When hunting in rivers that are murky, you can't see your prey. So often bull sharks will go around smelling stuff, looking for stuff, and also if it bumps into something soft that might be prey, it will give it a nip, see what it's all about. As an ongoing precaution, one of the most important ways to track bull shark human collisions is to tag these incredible predators, monitoring them closely and discovering where they're going. Thousands of miles away in another hemisphere, December 6, 2008, Bimini, Bahamas. Skilled shark biologist Grant Johnson and his girlfriend Katie Grudecki are about to face the challenges and dangers of bull shark tagging firsthand. Don't drop that in. The day's over. Working as volunteers for the nearby Bimini Shark Lab, they plan to catch and tag a bull shark in a style made famous by the movie Jaws. The method? Hook up from shore with a rope attached to a floating buoy that creates water resistance against the fighting shark. Then, chase down and tag the monster fish. Serial numbered dark tags help researchers collect data on shark migration and behavior. But implanting them is dangerous. Warning, don't try this at home. At the dock, the two shark hunters and crew chum the waters. As soon as the shark takes the bait, it's a matter of us getting into our boat because we have to chase that shark down. He's going to be running with the hook in his mouth. But hours go by with no luck. Then, an ominous shadow appears. Look at that, that spot over there. That's a shark right there. Grant and Katie spot a dense shape moving fast, headed straight for the dock. That's a bull. That's a big bull shark right yes. there. That's a big bull. There. Grant grabs the baited line, hoisting it into the water. He grips the other end of the rope tight as he can. He's taking it. Yeah. He's taking it. Yeah. Taking it. He got one. He's taking it. All right, hold on. All right. Look at this. Oh my God. All right, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Let's get on the boat. Let's get on the boat. Katie, grab that line up front, and Ricky, if you want to grab the one, come on down, Edgar. Anxious to get closer, Grant and Katie push into the current. The shark races towards the open ocean as the team chases the buoy with the boat. Just a few more feet. Yep. Getting closer. Grant gets ready to grab the buoy. I got it. I got it. He's fighting. But the agitated shark rages erratically at the other end of the rope. Once a bull shark decides that he's not afraid of the boat, it's potentially a dangerous situation because he will attack the boat, he'll bite the boat, and if you're not careful, you could fall overboard. Grant gets a glimpse of his target. It's huge. And it's mad. Screaming hard, shark biologist Grant Johnson is trying to keep his focus on catching and tagging a bull shark as it charges the waters beneath him. As Grant struggles to stay upright, girlfriend Katie Grudecki frantically steers the boat, trying to maintain the right tension on the line. The shark shows astonishing determination. Bull sharks are one of the few animals that, when they are presented with a threat, will actually fight back rather than running away. Grant's exhausted. Hanging on, he tries one more time to take the lead. With a final heave, Grant's got the bull shark reeled in. 
The beast is even bigger than he or Katie imagined. It was like a refrigerator in the water with fins sticking out. All right, I'm going to try to drag him back. You grab the tail and see if you can get that, that loop on him. OK. Once we got the shark close to the boat, it went a little crazy. Once they, they can see the shadow of the boat, the shape of the boat, the size of the boat, it makes them nervous, and they're going to put up an extra fight. While the crew holds the shark, they carefully secure a tag into the bull's dorsal fin. Let's stick a tag in this guy. OK. It's part yep. of the Bimini Shark Lab's ongoing Good. shark tagging program. Measuring the giant, the biologist makes quick calculations. Shark looks nice and straight. Good, good. The shark that we caught was about seven and a half feet long, and we didn't weigh it, but I would guess it was anywhere from 350 to 400 pounds. But the clock is ticking. To survive, the bull shark must be released back into the water without injury. We always want to make sure that the shark swims away OK, get in the water with the shark, and push it off to make sure it swims. The team yeah. guides the shark toward the open ocean. They've done it. Good job. Successfully tagged and released, scientists can monitor bull shark behavior and migration, tracking these adaptive animals wherever they go. One place these sharks may be headed is on an unintentional collision course with people entering areas where humans are encroaching on their habitats. In Australia, media accounts and government experts warn residents that since 2002, shark attacks in canals and rivers are on the rise. So far, attacks in the U.S. are rare. But one recent encounter in Alabama reveals a shocking reality. Bull sharks are our freshwater neighbors. July 11, 2009, Alabama River. More than a two-hour drive from the Gulf of Mexico, Marine Police Officer Jeremy Alford and his partner are out patrolling these normally calm waters. We're there to make sure everyone's wearing life jackets, operating their vessels safely. Clicking. But a routine call takes a startling turn. It took a minute for it to just register what I was looking at. Approaching a boat, the officers can't believe their eyes. He just came along the top of the surface of the water and was swimming toward the boat. Sir, keep your kids in the boat. Yes, sir. Corroborating accounts confirm the astonishing visitor. A bull shark found 80 miles from the nearest coastal waters. I was very very shocked to see a shark this far inland. It was the last thing that I would have expected that I would ever see. Officers report the bizarre appearance to authorities. Thankfully, no one's hurt. To date, the incident's an isolated occurrence. But no one knows what to make of the headline. Bull shark sighting. Shark spotted on Alabama River. One theory? natural disasters. Some speculate torrential floodwaters from hurricanes like Katrina increase saltwater inflow into rivers and lakes, bringing bulls with it. Another theory that might explain more close encounters is known as shark conditioning. In coastal regions, some speculate bulls and other sharks are becoming accustomed to humans and their habitats. Those scientists themselves may employ the techniques to lure sharks for research. The use of chum, cage diving, and other human interventions may cause sharks to associate humans with getting food. Across a hemisphere, on the Brisbane River, Queensland, 5 a.m., 51 miles from the ocean. It's expedition day two of three hoping to gather DNA samples, determined to snare a bull shark in fresh waters, researcher Ryan Johnson and fishing pro Paul Worsteling continue their quest. Hours later, Ryan and Paul's patience is tested again. As I said earlier, right, the fish that is worth catching will let you know when it's there. I know one thing, a couple of hours ago, I didn't want to put my foot in the water, and now, 
Not a problem. Yet, as more time passes, Ryan questions his three-day expedition's odds. It's getting pretty rough, Paul. I assume when you say rough, you're not talking about the sea conditions. You're talking about the fact that we cannot catch a fish. It's an ironic frustration, knowing that many who weren't looking for bull sharks have accidentally met these alpha predators here in close proximity to this very spot. February 26, 2005. Hanging out with a friend at a bend in the Brisbane River, 18-year-old student Nathan Shaxon decides to climb a tree. As I was climbing up, I uh, stuck my hand on a branch and I got bitten on the head by a wasp. To escape the wasp, Nathan jumps in the water, unaware he's falling into far greater danger. I was rubbing my head under the water to, um, I guess, relieve the pain, but as I was doing that, I, I felt something grab the top of my head. Nathan thinks his friend is playing a prank and moves to push him away. But Nathan's wrong. I sort of felt something dig in. I spun out, shoved my hand up, my finger went into his mouth. Definitely had sharp teeth. Uh, it cut me down to the bone pretty much on my finger. Uh, it wasn't a pretty sight. Then, just as fast as it arrived, the very real attacker swims off. Based on the relatively small size of the hand wound, Nathan speculates it was a juvenile bull shark. So I'd say if it was any bigger, I probably wouldn't be here to tell you the story now. Sharks don't attack humans to feed on them. They occasionally bite humans because territoriality, defensiveness, they get spooked, or they don't know what it is and they want to find out. Unfortunately, sharks have an incredible arsenal that they can use if they choose to. And when a shark even bites for an investigation, the effect on a human is drastic. Now, knowing Nathan's attack took place close to their location, Ryan and Paul's expedition presses on. To increase their chances of success, the team hatches a new plan. Divide and conquer more ground by setting off into the current on kayaks. Reaching a spot roughly 53 miles upriver, Ryan's having no luck. But a few miles away at 55 miles inland, Paul treks deeper into shark sighting terrain. Suddenly, something chops his bait. Straining to stay hooked, Paul's got a strong fish fighting against him. Matching the fighting fish maneuver by maneuver, Paul's experience pays off. With an expert heave, Paul wheels his catch to the surface. It's the expedition's first bull shark, a powerful juvenile. Finding bulls like this over 50 miles from coastal waters okay. may become increasingly common. We got flies in it. Yep. The bucking fish measures just shy of three and a half feet. At this size, it's hard to imagine bull sharks as an alpha predator. But bulls reach maturity in just five to six years. And where there are growing juveniles, adult bulls may not be far behind. There you go, mate. There you go. There you go. Now, the team is even more determined to gather DNA samples that may shed light on freshwater bull shark behavior uncovering remarkable river predators wherever they roam. Here on Australia's Brisbane River, one local story reveals a startling reality. Some bulls in these waters are big enough to attack a beast three times larger than most human beings. March 21st, 2005, Brisbane River five miles from Mount Crosby Dam. Professional horse trainer Alan Treadwell is out swimming a prize-winning racer, Glenn Burns on. Come on, boy. Part of a physical therapy routine, Alan uses a rope to guide the horse through the river. 
Then, both man and beast feel a sudden strong impact from below. The horse is in, in desperate trouble. Then he started thrashing around, but as he was coming in, he had something on the back of him. Something is trying to drag the racehorse down. Alan manages to pull his racehorse free. The yep. unseen gray predator is nowhere to be found. Wait, wait. After rushing the horse to a veterinarian, Alan can barely believe what he discovers. The bite married up exactly to a bull shark, and apparently the horse was very fortunate. The expert said that bull sharks come in and bite top jaw down and latch on. By examining this photograph of the injuries, comparing it to bull shark jaw samples, a local shark biologist estimates the attacking bull may have stretched as long as nine feet, a massive opponent big enough to take on a half-ton horse. Analyzing the incident, two elements stand out. Alan Treadwell's horse was attacked at a river spot five miles above a dam. Though in some locations, large sharks can breach dam locks open for passing ships. At Mount Crosby, it's different. The dam is solid. Experts theorize a small shark could breach a cement ladder built into the dam to allow spawning fish to swim up river. It must be possible for bull sharks to navigate some type of river rapid systems because where they occur is often upstream from rapids. But these are most likely smaller sharks, probably 75, 80 centimeters long, and not these two, two and a half meter adult sharks that we do see up these rivers. Once a small bull shark reaches the salmon ladder, it may continue to grow above the dam, becoming a whopper bull found in pure fresh water a full 60 miles from the ocean. Examining the details of the horse attack, the incident begs the question, what other bulls may be out there and where will they go next? In the aftermath of Bull Martin, Nathan Shaxon, and the Treadwell horse attack above a Brisbane River dam, a disturbing picture emerges. Increasingly, human bull shark river collisions may be the result of our intervention in nature, including development, pollution, and expanding population growth. Humans are putting dams across rivers, we're polluting the systems, and all of these things will have an effect on bull sharks. The number of bull shark sightings on the Brisbane River has made more headlines in the last decade than anyone can safely ignore. One of the things we're finding now is that not only newborns come up these rivers, but also bigger sharks, one and a half, two meter long sharks that aren't sexually mature necessarily, but aren't juveniles either. And the question's really still open as to what they're really doing up here. Typically, the largest bull sharks found in rivers are pregnant females on the verge of giving birth. But the river waters they frequent are rarely 100% fresh. They favor areas known as estuaries, coastal deltas where river waters meet salty ocean tides. Brackish water is for the big mature females who are pregnant to give birth. Alan Treadwell's horse attack happened in fresh water. Though unlikely, if the attacking bull shark had been pregnant, it could explain why the incident went beyond an investigating bump and bite. Cycles of mating, breeding, and birthing bring defensive behaviors and hormonally charged dangers unlike any other. Pregnant predator sharks and their mates can be some of nature's most aggressively protective creatures. During the reproductive stages, they get these huge levels of testosterone throughout their body, and it just makes them generally a lot more aggressive to any intruder. Just five miles from the site of the Treadwell horse attack, and more than 55 miles from the ocean, it's the third and final day of the freshwater bull shark expedition. For researcher Ryan Johnson and his team, uncovering any bull sharks so far inland, adults, okay. pregnant females, or juveniles, offers valuable findings. Like a true professional. Straight up in the air. Excellent, mate. 
Ryan hopes to determine if there are more sharks appearing here than usual, or more people encroaching on shark territory. Ryan hopes to analyze where the sharks are coming from by testing their DNA. Genetic samples can show if recurring bull shark populations frequent the same river system, or if new populations are invading. There could be a number of other factors why bull sharks are being seen more often in rivers. So they might stop utilizing some rivers, and they might start utilizing other rivers. And this could result in humans just becoming more and more aware of their presence in these systems. Repositioning at the exact spot where Paul caught his juvenile bull a day earlier, Paul believes the team has found the freshwater bull shark lair. Then, Ryan feels a sudden tug on the line. Turn that around, click your bail over, it's a good one. And hold on and lift. That's a good one, mate. You're on. Oh, oh yeah, jumping. Jump. Jump. We got a shark. That's a good fish, mate. He's yeah. coming back towards That's, me. Hold on. The lift. fight is on. Just lift the rod slowly, lift slightly. That's it. Look, he's coming up in the water. Oh, look, look at the fin. He's coming up. He's cut. Uh, that is a big, big fish, mate. Well, this could be a big fish, mate. This could be a big one. It's quite, it's quite tough, I've got to say. Now, all you've got to do is just keep nice and calm here. And don't wind any more, don't wind any more. Okay, I've seen him, I've seen him. There he is, don't wind any more, just slowly lift and come back. Right, that's the burly, that's the burly, I think. Oh, there he is. Darting under Ryan's boat, the fish oh, tries goes. to break the line. Tight, keep the rod tight. But in this tug of war, Ryan's fighting just as hard. The researcher gets the fish to the surface. It's a juvenile bull shark. My, oh, let him jump! Well done. <laughs> that is a beautiful fish. How's the way he went? That's a boy. That's a boy. I've got to. Okay. Oh, you stun. How is that for a Getting right in there. Catching another juvenile bull 50 plus miles from the open ocean offers more opportunity for examination. Sensational, isn't he? A beautiful fish. To keep the shark's stress levels down as he works, Ryan prepares a bucket with river water and adds a surprising but effective sedative, clove oil. In sharks, an antiseptic agent in the oil called eugenol acts as a natural but harmless tranquilizer. He actually calms down quite nicely, doesn't he? Yep. The sedative prevents the shark from excreting stress hormones, but Ryan's analysis has just begun. After a few minutes in the concoction, Ryan has a look up close and notices small marks. This guy's been a bit attacked by parasites, but it looks like they've they either burrowed down or they've gone now. He quickly collects a skin sample to take back to the lab. Oh, we'll put this little girl back. The team wants to release the shark quickly to minimize the time the fish spends out of water. To ensure the shark's safe reintroduction into the river, first they have to guide or swim the shark as the sedatives wear off. They actually have to be moved to have that water flow over the gills, get rid of the clove oil. Ryan wants to catch another shark to get more samples. Each shark is a critical number to add to a growing list of sightings. Then, minutes later, there's another strike. He got us. Unless he's right under the boat. Yes, he is. Oh. I think he's cut. It's no shark. What have we got here? Oh, we got a shark. It's a shark. It's a shark. <laughs> now. After three days trekking through the freshwater <laughs> Brisbane River, yes, yes. researcher oh. Ryan Johnson's got another river predator hooked. Oh, what a beautiful a fish. Shark. It is a little bull shark. Yeah, I wonder just lift that the up. The scientist has confirmed it. Just go around, a full 55 right, miles from the ocean, the Brisbane is brimming cool with is growing that? bull sharks. Yeah. Pulling this one in, Ryan moves quickly. Oh, really, you can see. Oh, He's not liking this. These things are just built, built to be tough and solid. You can see it's just a ball of muscle. Gripping the fish tight, the men examine the junior predator up close. Look at that. See, if you look here at those top jaws, top teeth, they've got baby little serrations in it. It's just like the great white. How these sharks will feed is they'll use these clasping teeth here on the bottom to clasp onto the fish. And then they can use these soaring teeth at the top to actually soar out hunks of flesh. It allows them to take small prey, but also take big prey. 
75 centimetres. The shark, yeah, he's a newborn. He's, he's no more than one or two years old. No way. And that's what we expect. We expect the mothers to come, give birth here, and instead of swimming out to sea, the little guys, they swim up the river because they're a lot safer up here than they would be out on the sea. Well, the fact that we are catching all these babies means that this river is definitely a nursery ground. It also tells us that when there's small ones, there's likely to be a big mother or two that are giving birth to them. Though Ryan isn't surprised to find juvenile bull sharks in a river, he is surprised by the sheer quantity of juveniles, a teeming nursery so far upstream from any known estuary birthing ground. And soon, there's Stop another warning. bite Stop on the line. OK, don't go too hard. Lift the rod tip up. Let him go. Let him go. That's it. Beautiful. I just want to see him. Oh, he's a nice fish. Yes. <laughs> he's a better fish. Oh. Oh, he's a goer. Oh, he's a chunky fish, this one. Look at that. Examining the shark, Ryan oh, notes male reproductive organs known as claspers, the distinctive double flap genital formation of all male sharks. Look at that, just a little boy. This is another little newborn. Probably no more than 75, 80 centimeters. Ryan identifies female juveniles as well. He hopes to gather crucial DNA data from as many specimens as he can. Only DNA can reveal certain details about the sharks congregating on the Brisbane River. Are they a new migratory family? Or is the same coastal population using an area far inland as their nursery? It may be the case that 16 years later, these little juveniles that we're catching actually come back to drop their own pups. Releasing one fish, there there's barely time before the next bite. This is a big one. This looks a lot bigger. Oh, look at that tail. Oh, that's a nice fish. <laughs> that is a nice bully. Oh, look at the gob on that. So much muscle on these guys. I just don't want to get too close to his nose. Ryan takes a blood sample to measure the juvenile's testosterone levels. Just going to insert this. Hold it still. Just going to insert this into its caudal region, to its tail. Take the blood sample. Usually you find the testosterone levels increase when they're reproductively mature and they're going through that mating period. But, you know, bull sharks are so aggressive, such a pugnacious species, suspecting even these juveniles, the levels will be very high. Ryan will send his tissue samples back to a shark research lab at Scotland's Aberdeen University. There, fellow biologists can conduct more in-depth analysis of bull shark genetics and migration routes. Off you go, mate. Catch a few more fish. Well done. Well fished. Well scientists. After traveling thousands of miles to reach one of the most active front lines of freshwater bull shark migration, Ryan Johnson and Paul Worsteling have gathered critical research. I've heard about bull sharks going up rivers for many years, but it's this myth, this mythical thing that you never actually see. So to be able to come out here and see with my own eyes bull sharks more than 50 kilometers <laughs> up a river in pure fresh water was unbelievable. I think there's big sharks in this river. We had a big fish on, and from the people I've been speaking to, fishermen have seen fish to 200 kilos. Now, that gets my heart pumping. There we go, I've got it. And further proof of increasing odds of human shark collisions continues to mount. Just three weeks after Ryan Johnson's expedition, 70 miles north of the Brisbane, an angler catches a fully grown nine-foot bull shark in Noosa River, a total of nine miles from the ocean. This impressive catch is the latest in a series of alleged adult bull shark sightings making news around the world. Sightings that make it evidently clear we inhabit the same planet as these amazing apex hunters, prehistoric beasts that were here long before we were. Ultimately, the bull shark's behavior in rivers remains a mystery. Yet one thing is clear. As their ecosystems face decimation and our populations grow, we must find ways to share common ground. And as we strive to understand and protect these adaptive alpha predators, 
While protecting ourselves, we must continue to explore mysterious frontiers of the world's most incredible river sharks.